so nowadays especially with the raising with the rising cost in rent and you know with just you know the lack of real estate um that surrounding london and the fact that you know investing in a restaurant is a lot of money and it takes a lot of capital you know so i'm sure it's going to work a good way to experiment and to kind of figure out if your if your venture is going to work and there's demand for it is to get a food truck and you know there's loads of food um festivals or markets happening around london or around most metropolitan cities as you guys are aware of or the next best thing is to have your restaurant or foods listed on apps such as Deliver and uber eats and these dark kitchens are now kind of popping up all over the place around london i think the main kind of proponent of it is a company called food stars they have a couple of restaurants a couple of kitchens around this area they have uh, where i live in east london they have some based around Vauxhall, i think in south london near the canals there where the arches are there and essentially um uber east of the delivery drivers kind of sit outside those restaurants uh at the times that they're going to open when they're kind of you know when they know the rush of food orders are going to come and then from then on the the riders, the riders and whatever delivery people take the packages from there and deliver it all around the uh, surrounding area so it's a really cool interesting venture um again just a really uh, just just again to highlight you know if you're somebody if you're if you're travis Kalkanik and you founded uber and you suddenly got ousted from your company it's no coincidence that somebody of that kind of mentality that kind of level of intellect is able to kind of bounce back in this sort of epic fashion because we're gonna i think we're gonna see a lot more of these happening popping up over all over the place it's something that i would definitely consider doing myself as a business to start off something if i definitely had an idea to maybe set up a kitchen somewhere set up a restaurant i'll definitely go this way i think it's the best way to go about things and probably less risk and you get direct you get quick you get um um you fail fast right um kind of feedback you get to know exactly what working what people like what they don't like so it's this article on daily mail that kind of talks a little bit about it more um i had an article on the ft that i went to read to you but um unfortunately i've gone over my uh free article a lot uh, allocation so i have to pay which i'm not going to do so this article here on daily mail it says uh, uber founder buys more than 100 dark kitchens across london in an adventure that allows takeaway only businesses to rent them from 2500 dollars uh, 2500 pounds a month to sell food on apps they have they got the longest titles in the world haven't they anyway the, the founder of Uber has invested in more than 100 dark kitchens used by takeaways. Travis Kalkanek pumped cash into units across London that allow businesses to rent spaces for £250, £500 a month. I, I knew this was true because this makes sense because I, I do remember randomly when I think Travis got kicked out of Uber. I did, I, I'm did. i pretty sure I saw him in a cafe somewhere in Holborn when I was walking down the street. I, listened, I was listening to an actual interview around the whole foray that happened when he was kind of asked for his company. I remember just thinking about, oh, like, I wonder what his next idea is going to be. I walked past a cafe and I'm pretty sure I saw him sitting on the window seat, just like, you know, on his phone chilling. I'm pretty sure it was him. Um, anyway, so it might make sense that he probably relocated here to London and has been kind of conducting business here for um, for the most part and then kind of, you know, keeping a low profile. I don't think he's actually spoken about what happened at Uber publicly. Anyway, the sites catered, uh, catered to firms that did, don't want to offer in-house dining, but instead uh, sell meals through apps such as Deliveroo, which a lot of people are using all the time now i know for me personally i've used delivery apps you know or uber Eats apps to order just a mcflurry itself and if you know how much it costs delivery just order one mcflurry is fucking baller as fuck but you know i'm rich bitch anyway it continues mr kirkhanic city storage system css bought the food stars cut startup last year the financial times revealed regulatory f- filings show that the takeover included cloud kitchens which operates under css the u.s best operation more than 600 the u.s the u.s brand operates more than 100 kitchens in london in the company's first move outside the states mr kakanik spent 150 million on controlling stake of css one year ago wow that's some bonus money mate uh, he is hoping to build on the food delivery market with a network of kitchens that can solely that can cater solely for takeaway orders such as uber east door dash hungry house saw in popularity food star started life in bethnal green in 2015 and was founded by william burstford daniel absham and roy shaby the trio started working together in 2012 making takeaway sushi in camberwell southeast london and rented out their spare kitchen space um great idea by 2018 the firm had more than 100 kitchens at sites including kentish town shoreditch Vauxhall, and back sea it does not operate the kitchen but leases it out so it leases out real estate to takeaway companies in the capital food stars describes the space as dark kitchens on its websites which are rented out fully stocked with cooking and prep equipment already in there so it's amazing right uh, mr kirkhanic latest investment was revealed by company house records which listed him as a person with significant control staff at cow kitchens have been instructed to keep their employer off their linkedin profile a source told is it okay fair enough but the company's house filings show that the directors are mr burford and mr shaby mr Kirkhanic understood to have been to keep his venture off the radar of rivals companies house listings of offices the, the, yeah awesome um let me show you a video actually that kind of talks about it a little more 
I think I might have said, I think I might have spoken about this before, but again, it's a cool idea, so I don't mind speaking about it. Again, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this earlier in another podcast, but you know, sometimes you talk about so many things, man, you have so many ideas, you begin what you say, man. Uh, let's get this video up here, I think it's on the BBC, it talks a little bit about it more. The old dark kitchen trend, show this, boom. Dark kitchens. <laughs> the writer's picking up a takeaway food order. But not from a restaurant. So you've got the communal space, this is all shared, then the kitchen, so boo, they do an amazing burger. Then got Chinese as you walk a little further down. And there are um, an individual set of pods for each kitchen table. Yeah, no, exactly. So individual kitchens, but then some of this space in the middle is shared. All the washing up is done by you guys. Absolutely. That's amazing, right? What a clever idea. So essentially, those three dudes that set up food stars or these rented kitchens, they actually just lease the kitchens out to Deliveroo, which is another weird, amazing, um, in, what you call it, amazing uh, revenue stream. So they have these places, they rent them out to Deliveroo, they pay rent, and then Deliveroo charges the kitchens the rent that they're going to pay for the restaurants, I'm assuming that way, right? So they get so much money coming in that way. Um, again, it's, a clever, it's just a clever business idea. For the, for the founders, it's clever because they, you know, great way to make revenue by getting these um once unused spaces all around london fitting up with the kitchen for the most part no one's going to object to it it's not like opening up a nightclub you know people always have complaints about that sort of thing it's a kitchen as long as it's up to spec or up to regulatory conditions for the most part people are going to be okay with it um it's a regular source of income um landlords may be more inclined to kind of give you that space because they know it's not really gonna you know there's no way that you're going to suddenly go bust overnight um there's guaranteed income there's a run there's a kind of a, a, a spec out runway there and obviously more importantly for the prospective restaurant owner it's a good way to kind of again test out your idea see if it has any sort of legs and even, even if you don't have aspiration to open up a restaurant there's a lot to be said for just having a, a, a dark kitchen a restaurant or a kitchen set up just for the app alone and that's it you don't have to deal with any customers face to face you just do everything via the app you send it you send your food out you get your good reviews and you just keep it moving i think it's a clever clever idea this is for all of the six restaurants this makes it cheaper, obviously. You're just running one. Yeah, we're really well, yeah. One might some shriv fridge tray for all the restaurants. I'll probably have their own little shelves or sections. Clever idea. Yeah. So I guess if you're a delivery and you have a you have these dark kitchens, you rent them out. You rent them from food stars. Um, obviously, food stars probably take a portion of that for the profits and then pay the actual lease itself. And then delivery then charges, then gives the rest the kitchens for free to restaurateurs, maybe for a set period of time, maybe so they can test their app and make sure it's working and take a portion of the sale. So maybe it's free, but then they take sixty percent of the or forty percent, and then once they start paying a little bit of the subsidies to subsidize the rent and the upkeep then it may be it might you know the the percentages go up a little bit and maybe they get to keep so six seventy and the root takes thirty it's a fucking clever 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 idea and it just goes to show going forward what we're going to see is a lot more of these popping up all over the place and probably we're going to see less of the idea because i always thought in my head uh it will it would make sense that delivery would probably go go into opening up brick and mortar stores right or a little kind of gallery or a little kind of you know uh, a mall where there's loads of different stores that sell different sort of foods that are all controlled by delivery but i think that'll probably be more has than what it's worth they're probably better off just have running these kitchens in the kind of hot spots they, they, they probably got all the data they need of the places that have the most frequency of orders and then opening up dark kitchens in those surrounding areas and then kind of catering that, that area that's kind of where you're going to really kill it what delivery has allowed us to do is to gain access to a much wider customer base mm, exactly They've got the same pictures, standard level of pictures too, that helps. Guide the customer base, people just want to eat stuff, they're willing to try things out more. I've, I, I try things out more via delivery app than I would do maybe in real life too. I'm not sure if you guys are the same, but I know I do. So you don't think delivery and kitchens like this are a threat to high street restaurants? The restaurant experience is, is never going to go away. And I never get that kind of famine thinking. It's I guess it's a journalist that asks those kind of you know stupid questions, but I never get the idea. Oh, this is going to be a threat to the move the cinema industry, to this industry. It's like there's no such thing as threats. Like things change, right? I listened to a really good podcast today um, by uh, Seth Godin, my uh, one of my, my one of my mentors from afar. 
um, and he released a podcast today called Supple, right? And he's speaking about um, how things are always changing and how in most industries, the people that who are more willing to change with the industry as it's moving along, as opposed to being resistant, are the ones that are being more successful, which is kind of, you know, an obvious thing to say. But it seems like in every era, in every industry, wherever, wherever, wherever you look at the course of time, there's a section of people that kind of resist the change that's incoming and they always get caught flat for it. And they're always the ones that are most surprised by the change. Uh, but I think what you can, what you, what the one thing you can guarantee that you can say for certain is that even over a period of 10, 20, 30 years, this dark kitchen um, model will evolve into something else anyway. And this will become redundant. It's just the nature of the beast. But if you're arguing that dark kitchens are going to replace kit restaurants, that's ridiculous. Like no one is not going to restaurants anymore because they use Uber Eats. Restaurant experience still exists, same way cinema experience still exists. But you've got Netflix, you've got YouTube Films, you've got Hulu, you've got Amazon Video. These things still exist because people don't mind going to a, a a cinema and watching a movie and paying uh, paying a little bit of a premium to see a film and you know go somewhere out with a friend or hang out or whatever that experience is still going to exist in the same way people still go club and even though you can watch you know boiler room sets of your favorite dj from the comfort of your own duvet um these experiences are always going to happen but again it's the it's the it's the kind of um nature of the beast that things will evolve over time with convenience people with, with the more with the drive for convenience things like dark engines will be ever more ever ever more present but again it's not these things are also limited by the area you're in, right? Because sometimes the best restaurants that you want to go and eat from might not be in your area because your area might not necessarily have the cachet or might not necessarily cater towards that kind of food, right? So it's not necessarily the restaurant's experience is going to die because you have to live in an area that has good restaurants around you for it to even have that kind of thing in your head. Again, I just think change is, change is, change is inevitable. Uh, don't fight it. Don't fight it. Yeah, no looking to replace that. It's still a small part of our business, but, but certainly it's it's something that seems to be working really well for everyone, so why not continue to expand? And the amount of jobs is given everyone, from the delivery drivers, from the kitchen, from the people that work in the kitchen, um, to every, for the people that handle the actual app itself, there might be somebody working um, with the company um, that just handles the app, the app orders that are coming in managing that kind of thing the experience that you'll get it's really un unheard of man it's really really unheard of it's a quality 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 thing delivery labels meals to show they don't come from a restaurant editions but as more of us turn to apps when we're hungry well will we care of course not i was thinking okay so editions is what they do in-house okay i didn't know that actually that's good to know but yeah, that's cool to see, man. A great, great, amazing um, investment. I think Travis is killing it. No surprise that the former founder of Uber has invested in these dark kitchens. I think we're going to see a lot of them popping up across the country.